Great year 2021. Welcome to a new one. It's been curiously interesting year 2021. We like to describe it as post-pandemic, but it seems like the pandemic is still on as new variants of COVID-19 are discovered every now and then. Life still goes on. January to December, here is how it went down. But before then, the channel has hit the 1,000 subscriber mark in November. It's been a great journey. I want to express my gratitude to all the subs and viewers. Thank you. As the content gets shaped by your preferences, inputs, and contributions, we build a community, we move. So, from January to December, Samsung Galaxy S21 open up the air with a camera bump that melts into the edges, Publish theme, flat edge-to-edge, -edge, narrow bezel display. ZTE with the world's first under-display camera, the Axon 20 5G. A camera that can see through the screen, text pictures and videos from beneath the display. And Xiaomi Mi 11 comes with a curved AMOLED display, 6.1 inches diagonally, with a smooth 120Hz refresh rate, 1 billion colors with 515 pixels for every inch, with a light form factor that comes with variety. Base model Mi 11, ultra light 5G. For me, this phone is the best for there. On the electric vehicles landscape, Tesla Model S came with a five-door liftback sedan with new interior, uniquely Tesla. Just a plain dashboard with 17-inch touchscreen and a half weirdly shaped steering wheel with a digital speedometer, zero to 97 kilometers per hour in 1.99 seconds. Insane. With a driving range of 628 kilometers. Then the Hyundai Kona Electric, a compact SUV, four doors, lift back, five passengers. Cute and cuddly, says the skipper. Cute and cuddly, boys. Cute and cuddly. Cockpit packed with buttons all over, grillless front bumper in two tones or single tone colors you can choose from. Twin headlamp, LED rear lamp, and 17 inch alloy wheels. We also covered the Kia Niro EV, a compact SUV with 385 kilometer range of drive. 201 horsepower with a 64 kilowatt hour battery with fast charging to directly rival the Kona Electric. In two models, EX and EX Premium, that comes extra with sunroof, adjustable blue accent coloring and lighting in the interior with heated front seats. Blackberry rumored a comeback, which turned out not to be true. Disappointed again. <laughs> Xiaomi launched the Mi Air Charge, a concept device that can charge your phone from several meters away wirelessly, even when physical obstacles are blocking the way. Then Xiaomi released the Redmi Note 10 with a camera module that has a clean contour cut, 3D curved glass back, and Gorilla Glass 5 protecting the front display, slim and declining edges in gradient bronze, onyx gray, and glacier blue colors with low profile side fingerprint sensor. Then Oppo dropped an interstellar marvel, the fine X3, with its protruding designs and slope, interstellar spaceship looking dual 50 megapixel quad camera, first of its kind ever. OnePlus partnered up with Hasselblad to give us the OnePlus 9, Samsung Galaxy A52 with its awesome screen, awesome camera, and long lasting battery life, Oppo Reno 5 to picture life together. The Mi 11 Ultra smartphone on steroids, beefed and greased up. Then Apple released the iPhone 12 Purple with AirTags, a small coin-sized piece of hardware that helps you track easily lost items like keys, wallets, and flash drives containing your cryptos. Infinix dropped the Note 10, skipped Note 9, a jump from Note 8. Techno released the Phantom X under its own name as a flagship device. Microsoft partnered with Nigeria to train civil servants and help our institutions with the latest tech. I don't know if that has happened or is still happening. Twitter was banned, crypto was banned. Then on the OS side, Apple dropped the iOS 15, Google, Android 12, Huawei, Harmony OS 2, and Microsoft Windows 11. On the channel, we unboxed and reviewed the Mi 11 Lite, slim and awesome phone covered the 1% rule, internet culture, 8020 rule and TikTok resume. The smartphone galore continues. Nokia came with the G10 and G20, then later dropped the XR20, a military grade phone designed to withstand the most rugged condition ever. Nothing dropped their transparent Air One Buds for their fans, 
Snapdragon released their highly specced smartphone for insiders to showcase their latest processor, the Snapdragon 888. Then in August, Samsung went for another run, released the Galaxy Z Fold 3, Z Flip 3, Huawei dropped the long-awaited P50. September and October came hot with the announcement of the in era. IPhone, iPhone 13 lineup dropped, Xiaomi dropped the Mi 11T and T Pro, Infinix the Zero X and X Pro. Microsoft dropped the Duo 2 Techno the Camon 18. Apple came with the MacBook Pro on M1 Pro and M1 Max, while Microsoft answered with the Surface Laptop Studio head to head. October to November, I had the privilege of attending the Future Investment Initiative, the fifth edition in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, organized by the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund, PIF, a global event where politicians, policymakers, technocrats, experts, students, and even small YouTubers like me convene to socialize, share ideas, discuss business and investment opportunities in different sectors. And I also got to visit other parts of the country, met up with friends, and had a good time. Inera was launched with the Speed Wallet available in the app stores. Google dropped the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, and we concluded with the E, and we concluded with the Inera New Era video. Oppo closed the air with the fine end foldables, concise, compact, and fit for single hand. This was 2021 in a nutshell. It's been an interesting as well as challenging year. Tell me how was your 2021 as we prepare to jump into 2022. I wish you all the best. It's your public tech advisor. Thank you for watching. Until the next one. <laughs> Cheers.